With Elden Ring DLC hopefully on the horizon here very soon, I decided to go back through my channel and find the 5 best Dex Arcane builds that I have made over the last year. Each one of these builds are going to do a ton of damage and they are incredibly fun. So let me know which one you guys are going to take into the DLC, which one's your favorite, and let's jump right into the very first one. The Blood Flame Warrior is a really fun build that I made that focuses on using Margot's Curve Sword and Mogwin's Sacred Spear to absolutely decimate the battlefield with Blood Flame. Between your incantations, and weapons, this build provides a really fun playstyle, and the fact that Blood Flame is so fun to use makes this a really great build for newcomers and veterans alike. Now, starting off with our weapons, we're going to be using Margot's Curve Sword, and this is going to be a weapon that you get from using the Remembrance of Margot the Fell after you defeat him in the capital. With decent physical damage and a deck scaling of B, this weapon is going to be a lot of fun for you to use, especially with its unique Ash of War. The blood loss on this weapon is going to be 78 when you get it, and it's also going to build up him incredibly fast. Its Ash of War Curse Blood Slice is a multi-stage Ash of War that allows you to build up Blood Flame incredibly quickly, as well as doing a ton of damage to your enemies with multiple slices. I found the moveset of using this Curve Sword as well as mixing in its Ash of War and then also throwing in some incantations makes for an incredibly fun and fast-paced playstyle for anybody to enjoy. Now, if you want to just sit back and absolutely decimate everyone on the battlefield, all you're going to need to use here is Mulgrin's Spear. With great range and arguably one of the best best Ashes of War in the entire game, you are going to be having a blast with this as it has a deck scaling of D, a strength scaling of C, and an arcane scaling of C, as well as having an 8 blood loss on the weapon at 78. Its Ash of War is going to cover a vast area, and for smaller enemies will absolutely destroy them, and with bigger enemies it's going to take off huge chunks of damage. Now you are going to pick this weapon up from the Remembrance of the Blood Lord after you defeat him in Mogwin's Palace. Now as far as our seal goes for our incantations, we are going to be using the Dragon Communion seal because it has an arcane scaling of S, and it's going to scale very well with Faith, giving us a great incantation scaling. Now, as far as our incantations go, you're going to use Blood Flame Talons, Blood Boon, and Swarm of Flies. All these are going to cause your hemorrhage to build on your enemy, as well as hitting them with some fire damage. If you do have the extra Faith, you can also use Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow as well to buff yourself. And speaking of buffs, you can use whatever armor you want, as long as you equip the White Mask. This is going to give you a 10% damage increase anytime Blood Loss is in the vicinity, and considering this build relies on Blood Loss, Loss, this is a really nice armor piece to have. Now as far as the talismans we're going to be using, I feel like all four of these talismans really synergize well together, and that's going to be the Shard of Alexander, which is going to give you that 15% extra skill damage, so both Ashes of Wars on both of these weapons are going to hit 15% harder. You're also going to use the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, which is going to give you a 20% damage increase anytime blood loss is in the vicinity. You're going to use the Fire Scorpion Charm to get that Blood Flame to hit real hard. We're going to get a 12% increase in our damage, but you are going to take 10% more. And to boost the incantations we're using, we are going to be using the Phlox Canvas Talisman, which is going to give us an 8% increase to our incantations. In your flask, you're going to have the Thorny Cracked here and the Flame Shrouding Cracked here. The Thorny Cracked here is going to give you a 20% damage increase to your successive attacks, and the Flame Shrouding Cracked here is going to give you an extra 20% fire damage. These go really well with the build, especially with the Margot's Curve Sword, because you're hitting really, really fast and doing a lot of fire damage with that weapon. Now, this build was created for New Game Plus, so my my stats were a little bit more elevated than the stats that I'm going to show you here on the screen, but you can very actively use this build on your first playthrough. You just might not be able to equip both weapons at the same time. If you don't want to go as incantation heavy with this build and you are in New Game Plus, you can replace the Phlox Canvas Talisman with Millicent's Prosthesis and that would give you some extra damage as well. These are going to be the stats for level 50, 100, and 150. You could probably min-max this a little bit more, but overall you are going to be doing a lot of damage with this build and I think it's a very unique playstyle. And with all of these builds, I'm going to show you. I am going to have the original build video linked down in the description below, so if I missed anything or you want to know where things are, you can go watch that original video where I explain in detail. Build number two is going to be probably the most fun I've had playing Elden Ring in a while, and this is going to be the Bloody Assassin build. It is incredibly fun. You do a ton of damage very, very quickly, and you're going to be using two Bloodstained Daggers to do so. This is a level 135 build that you can min-max all the way to 150, and you're going to have a ton of fun playing. If you love chipping down down your enemies incredibly fast and being up close and personal in the fray, then this build is definitely for you. So moving into the actual weapon, we're going to be using two bloodstained daggers with decent physical damage as well as a strength scaling in D, a deck scaling in E, and an arcane scaling in B after I've added the assassin's gambit, which lowers my footsteps sound to nothing. You can get this weapon very early in the game in Weeping Peninsula. All you need to do is kill the major demi-human right at the edge of the bridge, and you can keep killing him over and over again. It took me a while to get two of them, but it is doable and you will not 
not regret it. So for the dagger setup, I put Assassin's Gambit on one of them to get a better occult scaling, and it also eliminates your footsteps so you can sneak up on enemies and crush them with physical damage. This weapon has a D scaling in strength, an E scaling in dex, and a B scaling in arcane, and is also going to have 85 blood loss on the weapon. Now for our second dagger, I put the Blood Tax Ash of War on it, and this is also going to cause its blood loss buildup to go all the way to 113. I really like this Ash of War because it's going to activate the majority of our talismans, and it's also going to stack with the health back we get from certain talismans as well. Now for your armor, you can pretty much wear whatever the heck you want for this build. Obviously, we are going to be equipping the White Mask just because this is a bleed build, and we want that extra 10% damage on blood loss in the vicinity. So because I wanted to focus this build really on stealth and critical strikes, I ended up not using any damage negation talisman. But instead of using damage negation talismans, I actually used some health back talismans which stack with our Ashes of War, allowing us to have some survivability and do a ton of damage. Our first talisman is going to be the Green Turtle Talisman because anybody knows if you've ever used dual daggers, it's going to absolutely eat your stamina like crazy. This is going to give us a 17.7% .7 stamina recovery speed boost, so it's going to help us stay in the fray for longer, as well as give us a few extra opportunities to get some more damage off. Our second talisman is going to be a rather helpful talisman considering we don't have any damage negation, and that's going to be the Godskin Swaddling Cloth. We are hitting incredibly fast with daggers, and every seventh hit, you are going to get health back. This is a very complicated talisman in terms of how it works, so I'm going to leave a page from the wiki here on the screen, so if you guys want to read it and know exactly how it works, you can go ahead and do so. The long and short of it for daggers is every seventh hit, you're going to receive a flat 30 plus 3% of your total health back, which can be the difference between life or death, depending on what boss or enemy you're facing in Elden Ring. Now, if you did want to replace this talisman with a different lifesteal talisman, then I would recommend the Taker's Cameo, which is going to do the same thing, but instead of after every seven hits getting health back, it'll be after every single time you kill somebody, you will get a flat 30 plus 3% health back. Now, in our third slot, we are going to have the Dagger Talisman, which is going to give us a flat 17% increase in critical strikes. This is a absolutely phenomenal talisman to use, especially if you're looking for that high damage when doing backstabs or parrying your enemy. And for our fourth and final talisman, we are going to be using the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. This is going to give us a 13% attack power boost every single time we hit successive attacks, and considering you attack so quickly with daggers, you are going to jump right to that extra damage boost super, super quickly. I'm sure somewhere there's also a version of this in New Game Plus where you can equip both the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia and Millicent's Prosthesis. If you only have Millicent's Prosthesis, this talisman will work with the build as well, but I chose the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia because I didn't necessarily need the extra dexterity. Moving into your flask, you're going to use the Thorny Crack tier and the Green Spill Crystal tier. The Thorny Crack tier because we're going to get a 20% increase to our attack power after successive attacks, and for the Green Spill Crystal tier, it's going to increase our max stamina, which like we discussed before, is only going to benefit you because daggers eat up your stamina very, very quickly. Now there is one weakness to this build that I found while I was playing it. It's not the damage, but it's how close close you need to get to your enemy while also trying to figure out the wonky hitboxes that dual daggers can have sometimes. There are times when you can be as close to the enemy as possible, yet you still miss a slash or two, and it's only because the hitboxes for daggers are a little bit weird. Other than that, this build is incredibly fun, it does a lot of damage very quickly, and if you're looking to RP as a rogue or some kind of assassin in Elden Ring, this is definitely what you need to use. I'm going to leave the stats right here on the screen for level 50, 100, and 150. As you can see, the majority of the stats have been put into Arcane, which is going to combine with the great Arcane scaling that these daggers have, and you are going to be taking massive chunks of damage with Hemorrhage off your enemies quickly. And guys, real quick, I just want to thank you so much for watching this far into the video. If you guys are liking the content that you're seeing and you're finding some value here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. I would appreciate it a ton. You could be watching any video in the world and you're watching this one, so that is super, super awesome. We have three more builds to get through, and I think you're really going to enjoy them. So without further ado, let's jump right back into it. Now, this is one of my more recent builds. It's going to be a dual Knight Rider Flail Dex Arcane build. This is honestly one of the only builds I have made that absolutely butchers millennia into non-existence. I've always heard that flails were not great, but I've combined this Knight Rider Flail with Wild Strikes, and it overall does a really good amount of damage, proccing bleed incredibly fast. You can get this weapon early in Weeping Peninsula after you defeat the Knight's Cavalry here on the map, and you can only get one of them per playthrough, so this is a New Game Plus build, but if you'd like to use this on your first playthrough, all you need to do is combine the Knight Rider's Flail with a different flail in the game that you can get on your first playthrough, and it will work very similar. With decent damage and a deck scaling of B, you're also going to have an 8 blood loss on the weapon, sitting right at 101. As stated before, we are using Wild Strikes on this weapon, and it's going to proc hemorrhage like crazy. It's only going to require you to have 10 strength 
and 24 dexterity. So like I said before, when you get this weapon in Weeping Peninsula, you are going to be able to use it very shortly after. The stagger potential when you use two of these Knight Rider flails is incredible, and a flail that I would recommend to replace one of them if you are in your first playthrough is the Chain Link Flail, which has similar stats, but is going to give you that blood loss that you want. For your Flask of Wonders Physic, you're going to use the Thorny Crack tier, and that's going to give you a 20% damage increase in your attack power on successive attacks. This works very well with Wild Strikes, and considering the Flails attack very quickly, this is going to stack up very fast. For your second tier, the Greenspill Crystal tier, this is going to allow your stamina to recharge a lot faster, giving you a 17% increase in your stamina regeneration, and anyone who dual wields weapons in Elden Ring knows that that is going to eat up your stamina like crazy. Now for your Talismans, you're going to be using the Shard of Alexander. I am only using the Warrior Jar Shard here because that's all I had, but the Shard of Alexander gives you a 15% boost to your skills, and the Warrior Jar Shard only gives you 10. This is going to let our Wild Strikes hit a lot harder, and we do use that Ash of War quite a lot with this build. In Talisman slot number 2, we're going to be using the Rotwing Sword Insignia, which is going to give us an excellent attack power boost at 13% extra attack power. With the Flail moveset and our Wild Strikes that we have on this weapon, it's going to proc this Talisman incredibly quickly because it's going to proc from your successive attacks. In Talisman slot number 3, we're going to use the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. With this being a bleed build, we're going to have a nice, chunky 20% damage increase whenever blood loss is in the vicinity, and we do proc blood very fast with two bleeding Knight Rider flails. And lastly, the Erd Tree's Favor plus two in Talisman slot number four. This is just going to be a quality of life talisman, providing us some quality stats of HP, stamina, and equip load. If you really wanted to, you could replace this talisman and get more damage out of the Milson's prosthesis, but that's not what I chose to do, and overall I felt like this build felt really good with this grouping of talismans. Now as far as the armor of the build, all I recommend is that you get over the 51 poise mark and that you use the white mask. The white mask is going to give you an extra 10 percent damage increase whenever blood loss is in the vicinity, and this is also going to stack with our Thorny Crack tier and our Lord of Blood's Exaltation, giving us a massive spike in damage whenever we proc bleed. Now these are going to be the stats you're going to want to use for the build. As you can see on level 150, I have 50 Vigor, 20 Mind, 23 Endurance, 12 Strength, Dexterity is at 60, Intelligence is at 9, Faith is at 15, and Arcane is at 40. I found this stat spread to be a really good balance of everything that you needed for this build to do a lot of damage. You could potentially put a little bit more into Arcane, but overall I think this is a really good sweet spot for this build. The next build you're about to see is one of my oldest builds on my channel, and it is definitely a new game plus, no holds barred, throw everything at the game as humanly possible. We're going to be stacking Scarlet Rot and Dragon Communion Incantations while using two Ant Spear Rapiers to absolutely bleed down and rot down every enemy in this game. This is the Raging Rot build, and it is definitely for those of us who have been playing this game since launch, have not stop and have a very high level character. I do have a breakdown at the end of this video for what you're going to need for level 50, 100, and 150, so fear not, if you want to make this build, you can, it just won't be as crazy as the one you're seeing. Because this is a new game plus build, and my character on this particular build was such high level, it is going to be a dex arcane build, but you are also going to have a decent amount of faith in there as well, in order for you to use incantations like Scarlet Aeonia and XX Decay. Now as far as the armor goes for this build, like I said in some of the previous builds in this video, all I recommend is that you get over that 51 poise mark. In order to not be interrupted from some of your incantations, I definitely recommend a heavier, bulkier armor set, and also the Mushroom Crown. The reason you want to have on the Mushroom Crown is it's going to give you a 10% damage increase anytime Scarlet Rot or Poison is in the vicinity. And considering a good chunk of damage from this build is going to come from Scarlet Rot, it's definitely advantageous of us to have this on. Now for our weapons, we're going to be using two Ant Spear Rapiers. The first one is going to have Poison Moth Flight, allowing you to get poison build up and scarlet rot on your weapon and the second one is going to have blood tech allowing you to get hemorrhage bleed up and scarlet rot on that weapon as well with both rapiers having incredibly fast attack speed as well as some decent damage you are going to be building up status effects and just burning down your enemies with damage over time with this build you're going to have poison scarlet rot and bleed all procking and ticking down on your enemy and it's going to make this game incredibly easy so now let's move into the talisman first up we have the dragon crest great shield talisman which is going to be a great quality of life talisman providing us with a 20% damage negation to our playthrough. I believe in this video I was in new game plus 6, so enemies were hitting me pretty hard, and this definitely came in clutch. In slot number 2, we're going to have the Millicent's Prosthesis. This is going to give us plus 10 dexterity, as well as an extra attack power boost upon our successive attacks. You're going to get a total of 11% attack power boost when you hit all your successive attacks, and with the dual rapiers, this is going to be incredibly easy to proc. In slot number 3, we are going to have the Shard of Alexander. You can't have a good skill-based build.
build without getting that extra 15% damage to your skills, so Blood Tax and Poison Moth Flight are going to get that extra damage boost, allowing us to hit a little bit harder. In slot number 4, this is going to be the Kindred of Rot's Exaltation, providing us with a 20% damage increase anytime Rot or Poison is in the vicinity. Considering the majority of our spells and weapons are going to proc both of those things, this is definitely going to be a no-brainer here for our slot number 4. For our incantations, we are going to be using the Dragon Communion Seal, not only to boost our Dragon Communion incantations by 15%, but also we get a great arcane scaling with this seal, which makes sense considering we have a dex arcane build, and the majority of our incantations we're using are going to be proccing some kind of status. And lastly, before we get into the stats, we are going to be looking at the Flask of Wondrous Physic. For this particular build, we are using the Stone Barb Crack tier and the Dexterity Not Crystal tier. Looking back on this though, as I'm editing it now, I would definitely not use either one of those tiers. Because this character was so high level, those tiers really don't matter, so I would replace those tiers with the Thorny Crack tier and the Green Spill Crystal tier. You definitely want that attack power boost from the successive attacks, and you also are going to want that extra stamina on account of your dual wielding and the rapiers can attack very fast, draining your stamina. Now on the screen now, I'm going to place the stats for 50, 100, and 150 if you decide to go this route and level this build up for yourself. I think overall this is an absolutely fantastic build and incredibly fun to use, and per usual, if you have any questions about it, leave it down in the comments and all the incantations I go over in the actual video, which I will leave down in the video description. Now when it comes to the builds in this video, I believe I firmly saved the best for last. This is going to be the Eleanor's Revenge. It's been in a few of my videos prior, but it is just so good that I couldn't leave it out of the best Dex Arcane videos. Not only is the Eleanor's Pull Blade the absolute, in my opinion, possibly best weapon in the game, but you pretty much become a spinning Beyblade of Death, and nothing can withstand your attacks. Between its overall output of damage and just how well the heavy charged R2s and the Ash of War go together, overall this made for an incredibly fun build that gave me absolutely no trouble going through the game. Now for your first talisman for this build, you're going to be using the Shard of Alexander. This is going to give you a 15% increase in your skills, which is going to go very well with our second talisman, the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. You're going to get an extra attack power power boost based on your successive attacks, and considering the Bloodblade Dance is going to have a bunch of successive attacks back to back, and the Twin Blade moveset in general hits very fast, you're going to proc this Talisman giving you a 13% increase in your damage very quickly. For Talisman slot number 3, we're going to use the Fire Scorpion Charm. Bloodblade is inherently already on the weapon when it comes to Eleanor's Pole Blade, so you are going to up that fire damage by 12%. You will take 10% more damage using this Fire Scorpion Charm, but it doesn't matter considering you shred through enemies so fast. In our fourth slot, obviously we are going to be using the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, giving us a 20% increase to our damage any time there is blood loss in the vicinity. And with 83 blood loss innately on Eleanor's Pole Blade, this is going to be very easy to proc. Now in terms of the weapon itself, it is going to give you some overall decent damage. Its physical damage is going to be 176 plus 155, and its fire damage is going to add on top of that at 176 plus 90. It's going to have a strength scaling of E, a dex scaling of C, and an arcane scaling of D, and that might not seem like a lot of damage or very good scaling, but you attack so so fast and do so much damage in such a small amount of time that it turns out to be very good. With this weapon, you can pretty much stun lock any enemy depending on which combo you get them stuck in, either the heavy charged R2 or the blood blade dance. Either way, they are going to get staggered out of their minds. The attributes required for this weapon are 12 strength, 21 dexterity, and 19 arcane. So overall, these are not heavy requirements if you want to wield this weapon. Now for this build, the first tier we're going to use in our flask is the flame shrouding crack tier. This is going to give us a 20% increase in our fire damage and our our second tier is going to be the Thorny Crack tier, which is going to give us a 20% attack power boost based on our successive attacks. Both these tiers synergize really well together considering we do nothing but successive attacks with this build, and our fire damage on the weapon plus our fire damage from the Fire Scorpion Charm is also going to stack with this tier. The last thing before we get into the stats of the build, just put on the White Mask when you're putting your armor on. Anything over the 51 poise mark is good, but the White Mask is essential as it will give you a 10% damage increase when blood loss is in the vicinity, which is going to stack with our Lord of Blood's Exaltation. Now, I did have some final thoughts for this particular build. If you want to equip a dagger and then put the Golden Vow Ash of War on it, you can definitely do that as it will stack with your damage. And you can also add Flame Grant Me Strength, which is going to add 20% more fire damage and 20% physical damage to your build if you have the faith to do it. Now, in terms of the stats for the build, this is a level 150 build and everything on this build you can get on your first playthrough. My Vigor is going to be 50, Mind is 20, Endurance is 20, 
23, Strength is 12, Dexterity is 60, Intelligence is 9, Faith is at 15, and Arcane is at 40. I will say out of all the builds that I've made for Dex and Arcane, this one is definitely my favorite, so if you're gonna try any of these builds out, definitely give this one a try. And guys, that's it. I know it was a super long video, but those are the top 5 Dex Arcane builds that I have made over the last year that I think would be really, really good for you guys to try out and potentially take into the DLC whenever the heck we're supposed to get it. So, if you enjoyed the content, thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. Make sure to subscribe on your way out. It is free and it means a ton. We have done so much as a channel over the last year and I'm excited to see what we do in 2024. So, without further ado, thank you so much and until next time, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you in the next one.